The journalist was found shot dead at his home last weekend. The evidence keeps building in the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. 50 journalists were still killed for doing their jobs. When a society gets caught in this vicious cycle of violence and impunity, at some point, journalism is just not worth it anymore. That's enough. Put down the mic. Politicians are talking about the media as the enemies of the state. Le paysage n'est pas bon. Il y a une réelle détérioration. Pour jouir de sa liberté, il faut vivre. In the last two decades, over a thousand journalists have been murdered. What's more? This violence against journalists is only getting worse, and those responsible keep getting away with it. A journalist's job is to find the truth and to report the truth, and all around the world, they are being killed because of it. Jan Kuczek was known for exposing political corruption and taking on big money interests in Slovakia. But on the 26th of February, 2018, he and his fiancée, Martina Kuznarova, were found shot dead in their home. Kuczek was just 27, and he had his whole career ahead of him. He was the most kind and decent man I knew among journalists. He was always very helpful, very polite to everybody, and he was a brilliant analyst. I believe that for him, his work was also his hobby. It is always dangerous. He really liked beer. He had the friends. He was reconstructing his house. He was very kind and very nice person in general but he was writing like really hard-hitting investigations. It was uh, a shock at the start, then, then it was a, an outrage, and it was of course fear. If somebody is out there and he wants to kill you, you are already dead. That's a fact. Jan Kuczek's investigations had been focused on the corrupt relations between prominent Slovak businessmen and high-profile politicians. The double murder sent shockwaves throughout Slovak society. Jan was writing about the system of the political party Smer that was headed by then Prime Minister Robert Fico. It created a system that is now called the system of our men. There are judges involved, there are policemen involved, you know, prosecutors involved, business people involved. This means people who, who were protected by, uh, by political power, and Kochner was one of them. Marian Kochner, believed to be behind the murder, was a Slovak businessman who featured prominently in Kuczak's own investigations. A few months before Kuczak's death, Kochner threatened him over the phone. Those were not empty threats. A former intelligence officer named Peter Toff later testified that he was running a surveillance team that was spying on Kuczek and other Slovak journalists for Marian Kochner. Even the people who did the surveillance said like, hey, he's not like really our idea of who we are following. You know, there's nothing we can really use for extortion or blackmailing. When threats are not enough to silence a journalist, violence is the obvious next step. Peter Toff alleged that Kochner told him. Ça s'appelle l'intimidation, le fameux chilling effect. C'est un symbole, en fait. C'est vous, journaliste, vous dérangez, et voilà ce qu'on peut faire de vous. There are many stories like that of Jan Kuczak. Silencing a journalist with murder is increasingly seen as a viable tactic by those with everything to gain from it. And it happens again and again, all over the world. At the moment, every year, around 50 journalists worldwide are murdered because of the job that they do. Over the past decade, it's been a total of 500 journalists murdered. This shocking trend shows no signs of going away. Those responsible almost never face justice. 
A 2019 UNESCO investigation into the murders of journalists found that 88% of those murders go unpunished. One person murders a journalist, absolutely nothing happens, and it means that someone else who has this idea feels encouraged that this is something one can do. This is impunity, literally getting away with murder, and it is a frightening example of what happens when power goes unchallenged. And yet, the threat of death is not the only thing journalists have to deal with. Le l'arsenal qui est utilisé contre un journaliste quand on veut l'intimider et le dissuader, il est extrêmement varié. Several countries use the powerful cyber espionage tool to spy on journalists. A court in the Philippines has convicted a prominent journalist of the crime of cyber libel. Why am I under arrest? Oh, Online harassment is ugly and routine for women in journalism. Il y a le cyberharcèlement, il y a les pressions judiciaires, il y a les pressions financières, il y a les pressions directes avec les attaques verbales contre un journaliste. Hey, are you with the media? Use the fucking lawyers. Use the cheats. Ce media bashing, cette perte de confiance dans le journalisme, elle a contribué à galvaniser les foules qui sont qui s'attaquent aux, aux journalistes et la parole publique, la parole des leaders politiques qui se livrent à des invectives contre les journalistes, elle est euh, utilisée par ces manifestants. It's quite a common thing that we are called the public enemies by politicians. <laughs> Ce qu'il faut voir, c'est que finalement, euh, ce sont toujours les mêmes sujets en fait que les journalistes investiguent qui les amènent à être menacés, intimidés, pressurisés, euh, agressés physiquement et puis assassinés. La periodista Miroslava Brecht fue asesinada hoy. Entonces, eh, yo vivo en un país que es México, donde continuamente eh, pues estamos inmersos en, en, en un sistema de impunidad, donde hay niveles eh, de violencia que cada vez incrementan más. En México, la violencia contra la prensa ha sido común, con más de 120 murders desde 2000. It is the deadliest country in the world to be a journalist. There's an incentive for aggressors against journalists to keep using violence because the chance that they'll be caught is extremely low. Where globally, one out of every 10 murders of journalists is solved. In Mexico, conservative estimates put it at one in every 20. Los políticos, los criminales y todos esos poderes fácticos que siempre están intentando silenciar a los periodistas, el saber que si ellos eh, mandan matar a alguien, simplemente eh, no les va a pasar nada. La impunidad es el incentivo perverso que hace que eh, muchos delitos continúen eh, a la alza en este país. It's catastrophic. Once you've reached that threshold, once you're over it, it's incredibly difficult to go back to a situation where there's no violence and where the public goes up in arms against violence. Yet all over the world, people are fighting back against impunity. In Burkina Faso, the people have been demanding justice for the murder of investigative journalist Norbert Zongo for over two decades now. Il est connu pour ce qu'il représente. Il représente vraiment la, la fermeté dans la lutte pour la justice, pour les libertés. On the 13th of December, 1998, Norbert Zongo and three companions were found shot dead in a burnt-out car by the side of a road. Il était le responsable d'un journal d'investigation qui s'appelait L'Indépendant. Et ce journal faisait des révélations sur les crimes crapuleux du régime. Zongo was a thorn in the side of Burkina Faso rulers for years. Leading up to his death, Zongo had been investigating the torture and murder of a driver working for Francois Compare, the brother of the president. C'était à l'époque un homme très puissant qui avait un rôle dans l'ombre. Il n'avait pas beaucoup de tâches officielles, mais il était très proche de son frère, conseiller politique. Il était très redouté. The brutal murder outraged the people of Burkina Faso, resulting in months of mass protests, demanding answers and calling for justice. 
C'était gigantesque parce que les gens venaient des différentes provinces du pays pour se retrouver. C'est la deuxième ville du Burkina, Bourou Lasso, où il y avait une gigantesque marche meeting. Aussitôt après sa mort, il y a un collectif qui s'est formé pour défendre sa cause, pour que vérité et justice se fassent. The scale of the protest could no longer be ignored by the government. The president, Blaise Compare, was forced to set up an independent commission of inquiry looking into the death of Norbert Zongo. Je me suis consacré à l'analyse et à la résolution des préoccupations qui sont les vôtres. Despite the immense struggle of the family, activists and journalists and the people in the streets, impunity persevered. In 2006, the investigation into the death of Norbert Songo was closed without anyone being found guilty. Ce mouvement continue. Chaque année, bon, c'est l'anniversaire de, de cet assassinat, mais c'est en fait des mobilisations et des luttes contre l'impunité, contre les crimes et les crimes de sang, les crimes économiques, parce que, bien sûr, Norbert Zongo, c'était la personnalité phare, mais il y avait aussi tous les autres crimes commis par le régime qui étaient dénoncés en même temps. After ruling Burkina Faso for 27 years, Blaise Compare fled to the Ivory Coast, while his brother Francois, the alleged mastermind behind the murder of Norbert Zongo, ended up in France. La bataille pour la vérité sur la mort de Norbert Zongo a été le terreau sur lequel a poussé la forte demande de démocratie qui a abouti à la chute de Blaise Compaoré. La majorité, plus de la moitié peut-être même, hein, aujourd'hui des, des, des Burkinabines n'étaient pas nés à l'époque de l'assassinat de Norbert Zongo. Mais dès lors que vous évoquez cette affaire, ben, vous verrez toutes les passions qu'il y a autour. After the revolution of October 2014, the investigation into the murder was reopened, and in 2017, an international arrest warrant was issued for Francois Compare. C'est un détournement judiciaire à des fins politiques. Almost 25 years after the murder of Norbert Zongo, justice is finally in sight. L'affaire Norbert Zongo, elle était morte, hein? Euh, Aujourd'hui, elle est en cours, nous en parlons. La même France se dit l'extradition est en cours. Et il faut rappeler que c'est la justice burkinabé, donc les autorités burkinabées qui ont demandé cette extradition. Qui aurait, qu aurait pu l'imaginer sous le règne de Blaise Compaoré Il demande l'extradition de son propre frère. Moi, je pense que personne, déjà. These are the names of journalists murdered in the last two decades. They had risked their lives to bring the truth to light, and they were killed because of it. Through a lack of political will or institutional capacity, only very few of their deaths are ever investigated. In even fewer cases, the perpetrators are actually brought to justice. What we're hoping is that by solving these murders, even 10 years, 15 years after they occurred, we're sending a message that you cannot get away with murder, you cannot get away uh, with attacking journalists. It's an affair that has been followed for many years on the plan judiciary, on the plan of mobilization in the street, on all the plans, we haven't lost one single iota. In Slovakia, the death of Jan Kuczek and his fiancée inspired thousands to take to the streets. The people demanded an end to the system of political corruption that was exposed by the murders. One of the reasons why we did, didn't give up as a journalist was that, you know, we, we, we saw all the people in the streets who were protesting the murder of our colleague. And it was like a huge motivation and huge support to continue in, in the work we do. Notre rôle, c'est de faire en sorte d'accompagner ces affaires, de les dénoncer, de dénoncer l'impunité. In Amsterdam is misdaadverslaggever Peter R. de Vries neergeschoten. I was in a radio studio where we were talking about press freedom in Mexico. Tweede Kamer die praat over de pers vrijheid en persveiligheid yeah. in Nederland. Heb je daar nog een gedachte over die je wil delen? And I said I'm worried because somebody's going to get shot one of these days. I thought well maybe in the next few years and it happened the week afterwards. Just a few weeks before Jan's murder. People asked me if I'm not afraid that the journalist will be again physically attacked and I, I always told them no 
the country evolved. It's not something that you can just brush off. We should take those as warning signs. You know, two murders or three murders uh, is enough. No more attacks. We need to be serious about protecting reporters. We need to be serious about investigating crimes against the press. If we don't, then the consequences can be far more severe than we can anticipate right now.